14.2 Translate and Reflect Trig Graphs. This comic here I only really put in because it had to do with reflections and this guy reflected over the x-axis was like this guy and it was reflections of a math teacher. I don't know, we're talking about reflections today so that's all I've got for you. In today's lesson we're going to be doing translations of sine and cosine graphs. So we have our base case, which was y equals sine x, and we're going to be doing some transformations to it. So we're going to be looking at y equals a sine b x minus h plus k, or y equals a cosine b x minus h plus k. And what we're going to be talking about right here applies when a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. So actually none of these are a reflection, right? Because if it was a reflection, we would have had a negative out there, and we're dealing with strictly positive. Anyway, on with what I'm trying to say. The first thing you're going to do in these problems is identify the amplitude, which is just your a, and your period, which is 2 pi over b. I don't need the absolute value of b here because I restricted b to being greater than 0. And this is the same thing that we did in yesterday's lesson. The second thing we're going to do, which is new, is identify the phase shift. And that's the same thing as the horizontal shift, which we've been talking about all year, that h thing. Remember that when we do x minus h, that means we go h units right. We always undo all the x stuff. And then the vertical shift is just k, so this would be k units up. And then step three is just find those five key points that we used in 14.1, which were, you know, the 0, the pi over 2, the pi, the 3 pi over 2, and then the 2 pi, just the five points on that unit circle. Um, and then just do that transformation of y equals sine x or y equals cosine x. I'm going to show you what I mean on the next slide when we do an example, but you might want to refer back to this so you remember what you're doing. So basically, in this case, let's just start with x and then y equals cosine of x, and then we'll apply our transformations. So of course, I'm going to draw my little unit circle. Here we have the point 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And then our radian measures are just 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So we'll start off with just those five key points, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi is one full period. Since we're dealing with cosine here, we're going to be looking at the x-coordinate, x and x. And so we just have 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Now I'm simply going to apply my transformations in order. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply all the y stuff by 1 half, times 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 1 half. The next thing I'm going to do, remember that everything applied to the x stuff, we undo it. So I'm going to divide the x stuff by 2. Because to undo 2 times, I divide by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. You see that our period is only half as much now. It goes from 0 to pi. But let's finish up what we were doing. So our third thing to do is going to be to shift all the y stuff two units down. So subtract two, subtract two, subtract two, keep subtracting two, and we get minus one half there. Finally, I just need to graph those points. You'll notice on this problem right here, I did not have any x shift. I don't have any plus or minus that's attached to the x. So my x values go from zero to pi, I'm just going to go by negative a half since I have a lot of halves here. So negative a half, negative 1, and 
I actually don't have any positive values here, but I'll just label one of them. So now I have the point zero, negative one and a half. So at zero, I'm at negative one and a half. Then I go to negative two. Then I go down to negative two and a half. Then I come back up to negative two, and then back up to negative one and a half. So there we go. That does indeed look like my cosine graph shifted down two units. So a quick mental check would say that we did things right. Let's go ahead and identify our amplitude, our period, and now we have a phase shift, which is just the horizontal shift, and the vertical shift. And you can just abbreviate these things P, S, and V, S. Anyway, our amplitude is simply that one half. Our period, how long did it take us to get one time around? That was just pi. And our quick check, is it two pi over B? Our B is two. Yep, we did it right. Our phase shift, well, we said there was no horizontal shift. There's no plus or minus attached to the X. And our vertical shift is simply down two. Let's do the same thing in this problem, but here we have sine. So we'll start with sine. Quick little unit circle. I really hope that drawing this unit circle is just a piece of cake for you by now. So remember, since we're doing sine, we're going to be dealing with the y stuff here. And so our key five points are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And since we're doing sine, I just highlighted what we're dealing with. And so now let's tackle the transformations. The first step is to multiply the y stuff by two, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. The second step will be to divide the x stuff by one half, aka multiply x stuff by two, because dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's just multiply by two. Well, finally, this is going to be affecting our x because it's attached to the x. So we are going to shift the x stuff four pi units and we're going right because remember we have to undo all the x stuff. So just add four pi. Before I graph it, let me just get the amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift out of the way, and I just abbreviated those. The amplitude is simply two. The period is how long it took us to complete one full cycle. Well, we went from four pi to eight pi. Don't get confused there. Our period's not eight pi, because remember, we shifted over. So we started at four pi to get to eight pi. That took us four pi. Anyway, let's do our quick check. Our period is 2 pi over b, and our b is 1 half. So 2 pi over 1 half is keep it, change it, flip it, 4 pi. Yep, we did that right. The phase shift is how much we shifted it. We shifted it 4 pi right, and we didn't do anything to the vertical. We have a plus 0 hanging out there, so we have none. So let's go ahead and graph it. I'm just going to go by pies. So one, two, three, four pi is there. Six pi, eight pi is there. And then we went up and down two. 
And so we started at 4 pi, and our coordinate was 0. And 5 pi, we went to 2, there, there, and there. And then what if I asked you to draw two periods here? So let me just draw in this one period. Well, that would just be going the other way. So we go down here, and then 0, and then up here. See, it's just a cycle. This thing is just cyclical. There we go. That's actually two periods of my sine graph. So I can go forwards and backwards. That's why I remember our domain was all real numbers. Our range in this case is just negative 2 to 2 because our amplitude was 2. Now when we do reflections, all we do is everything that was up here goes down there. Everything that was down here goes up there because remember our sine graph just looks like this. And so negative sign is just the reflection over the x-axis. Note one thing, the amplitude is never negative. Remember we said that the amplitude was defined as the absolute value of a because it's a distance. It's never negative. This graph right here is an amplitude of 1 reflected. Same thing goes with this one. Let's do an example problem. We're going to be applying the same exact things. For this one, I'm not drawing my unit circle because I've just drawn it too many times. 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. If you need your unit circle to get these values, do it. But I kind of know we're at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, only because we've just done it a million times. And the first thing I'm going to do I know this doesn't affect the amplitude, but it does affect what happens to my y stuff. So the first thing, I'm going to multiply the y stuff by negative 1, because there's no number out there, so it's just a negative 1. So do it. So you'll see that that right there took care of my reflection over the x-axis. The second thing I'm going to do is divide the x stuff by 4. And so I'm compressing this thing, and the period's going to be only 1 fourth as much as it used to be. So I have 0 divided by 4, pi over 8, divided by 4, divided by 4, divided by 4. And then the last thing we're going to do is our vertical shift. So shift the y stuff, one unit up. Let me just identify the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. The amplitude is simply one. Remember, the amplitude's always positive. It's one reflected. The period, well, we go from 0 to pi over 2, so that's simply pi over 2. Let's check it real quick. 2 pi over b, which is 4. Well, that's pi over 2. Yep, that worked. Our horizontal shift, or phase shift, was nothing. Our vertical shift was 1 up. And so let's plot this guy. And I just noticed I forgot to do this. So let's shift everything up 1. That looks better. So we're going between 0 and 2. And we're going by pi over 8's here. 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4. 3 pi over 8. 4 pi over 8 is simply pi over 2. And so we start at 0, 1, 2, 1, 0. And so here's our cosine graph. It's definitely reflected. And it's also shifted up one unit. So you might notice that that looks a little bit more like your cosine graph when you draw in the axis that's been shifted up. But you don't need to draw it. And of course, we can't close a lesson without doing a tangent. So draw another unit circle for this one since we haven't done it in a bit. So here this point is 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. So I'm going to just go ahead in blue and do y over x because tangent is y over x. And that is 1 over 0. And it's undefined up here. It was also 
undefined down here for similar reason because we have negative one over zero. And right here, y over x is zero over one, which is simply zero. And then we had our 45, 45, 90 triangle to the rescue, which was at pi over four. Remember that we had y over x is just one because our 45, 45, 90 triangle had equal x and y leg. And so by the same reasoning down here at negative pi over four, I would have had y over x equals negative one. And I guess I should have noted that right here we're dealing with zero degrees. Right here we're dealing with pi over two radians, I guess I should have said. And here we're dealing with negative pi over two radians. And think about it like this, in tangent I really want a fluid motion and if I went from here to here, you see I would have had to jump because it was undefined here. Whereas if I just start at negative pi over two and they go up to pi over two, it's one continuous motion that's defined everywhere in there. Anyway, I can break that down a lot more in class, but let's just go ahead with our transformation. So x, y equals tan x. And so for tangent, our five key points are one, two, three, four, five, negative pi over two, negative pi over four, zero, pi over four, and pi over two. So that's always what we're gonna do for tangent. And then we get undefined, and then we were at negative one, then we we're at zero, one, undefined. So that's where we start for a tangent, just like we knew where to start with our sine and cosine. From here, simply apply the transformations in the same way that you've been doing. So go ahead and multiply the y stuff by negative two in this case. So undefined remains undefined. Multiply by negative two, multiply by negative two, multiply by negative two. And then we are going to, this is a shift, we're going to shift the x stuff pi over two units right. Because remember you wanna undo that x stuff. And so add pi over two, add pi over two. So we get pi over four, add pi over two, add pi over two, add pi over two. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle this graph here. It looks like at zero, I was undefined. So we just put our vertical asymptote there, and then we have pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, and then four pi over four, which is just pi. That was also undefined. And we went up two, and we went down two. Plot that, plot that, plot that. And you've really got to know what the tangent function looks like in order to get these right. Remember it looked like that sideways S shape. So that's about it. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.